Today we're having a look at understanding the spirit of faith, the confession of faith. What is the confession of faith? We're stirring ourselves up to understand that when you say something, it is going to come to pass. And we're going to look into that in more detail and help one another to walk and speak accurately the Word of God. Hello, this is Alan Bagg, and welcome back to Wisdom for Life. Today we're having a look at understanding the spirit of faith, the confession of faith. What is the confession of faith? And this is such an important subject because, you know, even today I still hear Christians who will say things, and I go, that is not the Word of God. And the reason for that is because we are trained in a world to speak in a negative way. When we were raised as children, maybe we didn't go to a church that uh, taught the spirit of faith or taught faith the way it's supposed to be walked in. And we were just, if you think about speech today, it's geared a lot. A lot of what we say is geared around negative things. For example, people say, you know, I'm dying to go to Mauritius. Now, I know what we mean by that. And my question is always, why would you want to die to go there? Surely you want to be alive when you get there. And the thing is that it's a way of trying to use exaggeration to try and make a point. You know, my feet are killing me and uh, that tickled me to death. Why do we need to use death to communicate these things? Uh, you know, I'm afraid I can't do this. Fear is of the enemy. And so we need to recognize that a lot of our speech, a lot of what we say is geared towards negativity. Even today, in modern language, the, the youngsters talk about something that is supposed to be great. They say, man, that is sick. Or, you know, it, it's a concept of trying to be clever with the English language. Well, the devil's very subtle because sickness and disease is from him. Death is from him. That's from the curse. And Jesus died and gave his life so that we could have life. He said, I came that you may have life and have life abundantly. It's the enemy that steals, kills, and destroys. And God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. And if He can get us to use our conversation, why? Because there is power in the words that we speak. And we need to understand that. It's much the same way. The way I think of it in the natural is like taking a, a shotgun or a gun with, with bullets in it. We don't just walk around and shoot bullets off in any direction because one of those bullets could hit somebody and kill them. No, you need to be cautious with what you shoot. If you're going to shoot uh, for any reason, you need to make sure that it's going in the right direction where you intend for that thing to land because if we're just shooting in every direction, we could hurt somebody. And that's the same way when you're busy cutting something in the kitchen with a knife. You don't talk, you know, flinging the knife around because if someone's behind you, you may just, may just stick them with that knife. You want to use the knife for what it's intended to be used. And so the same reason when it comes to our speech, we're just throwing words out there, negative and death and fear and all that kind of thing. And these, this is so important for us to get a hold of because when we use words inaccurately, it can cause destruction in our lives. Now, this is a thing that we spoke about yesterday. It's hidden in a mystery. That's why when people who don't understand the mystery of the gospel in so many different areas, then they say, oh, ah, man, that's just a figure of speech. That's just how things work until you see into the mystery of God. And if you have a look at yesterday's program, I spoke about how God hid even the gospel, even where Jesus died on the cross and rose from the dead, all of that was hidden in a mystery. And some of those people say, but why does he make it so complicated to understand? If he wants us to know who he is, he's not hiding it from you. He hid it for you. It was hidden so that the devil could not see it. He said that had the prince of this world known, if he had known the mystery, he would never have crucified Jesus. 
but because it was hidden, he thought he was getting rid of Jesus. And in the meantime, as Jesus died and rose from the dead, he fulfilled all the prophecies of the Old Testament. They were there all the time. And the veil was removed. And now Paul says, we can see into that mystery. We now can see that mystery and we can take that word of God. So let's go back to 2 Corinthians chapter 3 once again. And we see here in verse 11, If what is passing away was glorious, what remains is much more glorious. Therefore, since we have such hope, we use great boldness of speech. So now he's saying, I can speak boldly the things that before were mysteries. And he says, because unlike Moses, verse 13, he put a veil over his face. Verse 14, their minds were blinded. Until this day, the same veil remains unlifted in the reading of the Old Testament. So when you go and read the Bible, just as an unsaved person, it doesn't make sense. But notice what he says here, because the veil is taken away in Christ. So now that the veil has been removed, verse 17, Now the Lord is the Spirit. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. Now the Spirit of God gives you freedom, gives you that release, that taking you out of bondage into victory, we all with unveiled face. Hallelujah. Now the mystery has been removed, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord. Now remember, glory is the full manifestation of the potential of that person. So whenever you see God demonstrating His power, when you see miracles, signs and wonders, when He speaks His word, when He does awesome and magnificent things, that is His glory showing up. Now we can see that same glory when you look in the mirror. Now James 1.23 talks about the Word of God being a mirror. So obviously when the Word of God describes who God is, but it also reveals who you are because you're born again in the image of God. Now that you're born again in His image, you can see the same glory. We are being transformed, changed, into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. Now, if you come down to verse 3, it says that the gospel is veiled. It's veiled to those who are perishing. So those that haven't seen, the, haven't received Jesus as their Lord and Savior, they are the ones who do not, when you read the Bible, I know before I got saved, I tried, man. I read this Bible. I wanted to know. I was searching. I wanted to know, is God really God? Is this true? And I'd read it and it'd be so confusing to me. But now, he says here, even though that it was veiled, verse 4, the God of this age has blinded who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel, the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. Look at verse 6. It is God who commanded light to shine out of darkness. So what happened? He sent somebody into your life, somebody into my life, and when he did that, that person declared the word of God to us. They said, Jesus loves you. He died for you. He gave his life for you. And then he rose from the dead. And today he is alive. And in the speaking of that word, by faith, light entered into our lives. And through that light shining in the darkness, what happened? He shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. So through that spoken word, you could now see the truth because someone spoke to me and said that Janine is healed. I heard those words. When I looked at it, I might have thought, well, I don't know. I mean, she still looks like she's the same person. Yet when I saw the manifestation of that in an x-ray, the healing had actually taken place. A doctor verifying it that this is something that was not possible medically coming from a situation situation of being having sickness and disease to where it's gone and <laughs> he doesn't even know how that happened now that is a manifestation of glory it caused that word in me to come to life and the moment that word came to life this is what happened we have this treasure in earthen vessels see even in our physical lives we have this knowledge of the glory of God you have the full knowledge of God's glory in you so that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. We are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We perplexed, but not in despair. We persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, 
but not destroy. Now, why? Why would that happen? Why when somebody, when you look at them, I've had people, when things are going wrong in my life and, and things are happening, someone asks me, how are you? That's one of the things that frustrates some people. Some of them say, how are you? And I say, I'm always well. And they go, yeah, I know you always say that. Just tell us once, what, what are you actually feeling? You don't ask me what I feel. You don't ask me how my body feels. You ask, how am I? Now, I am always going to say I'm well. Yeah, but we know what you're going through. We know you're struggling. We know you're battling. How come you're always well? Because of this mystery, the wisdom and the knowledge of this mystery. I see that even though the enemy's taken his biggest shot and he's tried to press me on every side, he's tried to crush me, he's tried to put me in despair, he's tried to persecute me, he's tried to make sure that I'm, uh, that I'm, that I'm struck down, but here's the good news. Even though he tried that, I'm not crushed. Hallelujah. I may be hard pressed, but not crushed. I may be perplexed, but not in despair. I may be persecuted, but God's never forsaken me. And I might be struck down, but he hasn't destroyed me. Why? Because I see the victory coming. If he sent his word to heal me, I'm healed. If he's provided my every need, I have no lack. I may see lack in my life, but I, Alan Bag, will never lack. And whenever I need something, it'll always be there. The same for you. If you can believe that, that by Jesus' stripes, you've been healed. He's blessed you with every spiritual blessing. He's given you all things pertaining to life and godliness. That's available. It's in you right now. Everything you could possibly need is already inside of you and me as believers. And so now, how do we manifest this wisdom? You come down to verse 13. Since we have the same spirit of faith according to what is written, I believe, therefore I spoke. We also believe and therefore speak. Get a hold of that. He says, yeah, it's a spirit of faith. What's the spirit of faith? Now, that's not talking about your spirit or the Holy Spirit. It's talking about a team spirit. It's like an attitude. It's like, you know, people have a, you've, you've heard of the esprit de corps, like in the Marines, they got the esprit de corps. What do they mean? It's the spirit of the corps. There's a, there's a prevailing attitude. You can have Marines trained in different bases, and yet when they meet and they find out that they're Marines, they talk the same language. They've got a common culture. What is that? Same way it's a, a, a sport team has a team spirit. You notice a team that is on a winning streak, and they're winning all of their matches, there's an attitude amongst them, you cannot beat us, we are going onto that field, and we are winning again. To a point where sometimes some teams are so afraid when they find out they're playing that team, they already think, man, we're playing, we're going to try hard to beat them, but they're going in already dejected, they're going like they're already going to lose, chances are that team will lose, and that team that had the attitude of, of victory, they go in, they win, they come on, they say, see, we knew it. We told you, we are the victors. We're always going to win. There's a spirit. There's an attitude amongst that. Now, that team spirit is what we're talking about. There is a spirit of faith. There's an attitude of faith. So if somebody is in faith, now remember when we say faith, we're not talking about a belief system. Like sometimes people say, what faith are you? And then what they're actually asking is, which part of the church do you belong to? Are you Catholic or are you uh, Presbyterian or Baptist or whatever? Or even are you some other type of religion? That's not what we're talking about, multi-faith or different types of faith. This word faith is that where the Bible says in Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the work of, uh, word of God. What is that faith? Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So when God says you are healed, or God says that He's provided your every need, you see a promise from God, and you see that God has already declared something for you, once you believe that, here's the thing, you may not yet see it in your life. Maybe you're dealing with a symptom, and there's a pain, or there's a lump, or or something, the doctor has a report that says you got this in your body. That's the evidence. That's, that's, the, that's the report of what they're seeing in the natural. But there's a higher report. 
that the word says Jesus bore away every sickness and he bore away every disease. So if he's taken the sickness and disease, the doctor has found symptoms of it in my body, but Jesus already bore it away in the realm of the spirit. So by his stripes, I've been healed. Now I have that written word that says I am healed. The natural is trying to tell me I'm not healed. So the natural is what I see. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. In other words, it's not yet manifested in my life, but it's hoped for. It's something that I have an expectation of. It's the evidence of things not seen. So when I don't see the manifestation yet, that's where my faith is. My faith is based on I have been healed. Even though I don't see it, I have been healed. Even though my bank account may be empty, my God has supplied all my need. Yeah, but show me. Uh, seeing is believing. No. That, see, again, that, that's, that's under the mystery. That, that's where the, the, the world has been blinded. Seeing is not believing. See, if I see this pen is here, I don't have to believe it's here. <laughs> there it is. I can feel it, touch it. I don't need belief for that. Believing is for something I haven't yet seen. And so if I'm wanting to see it manifest in my life, it begins with believing it. So now I believe my needs are all provided. Now, once I'm in that place, I have faith for it. Faith is the substance, it's the tangibility, it's, it's the existence of something that I'm hoping for. It's the evidence, there's my proof. Here's the proof, the written word of God, God's spoken word to me. That's the proof I have my needs supplied. That's the proof that I've been healed. Now, if I believe that, then what's going to happen? The attitude, the spirit, the attitude of faith is that having believed, I speak. So what do I speak? I'm going to declare and speak what I believe. So when someone says, how are you? I don't say, oh, I'm sick. Because that may be what I'm feeling. That may be the pain in my body. That may be what's hurting right now. <laughs> I may be out my whole head and everything. If somebody, you know, if I've just been through a deal and I've lost the deal and all of a sudden it seems like I've gone into a terrible debt or whatever, it looks like I'm going to lose. And someone that moment says, how are you? I'm not going to turn and say, man, I'm broke. I've just I've been destroyed. My business has gone under. I'm out of here. I'm finished. That's not going to come out of my mouth. Why? Because I've renewed my mind that even though these things have attacked me, I may be pressed on every side, but I'm not crushed. There may be a symptom in my body, but I'm not accepting it. And so what I say, I believe I'm healed. I believe I'm delivered. God never leaves me nor forsakes me. I believe every need's been supplied. What I believe is what I speak. That's the spirit of faith. That's the attitude. Now, that doesn't come easy. Now, that's something that I do realize. I've been through it myself. Sometimes when I explain this to somebody for the first time, they go, but Pastor, and you don't understand. It's so difficult. I'm really struggling. I get that. Because I've been there. I know exactly what that feels like. And in the beginning, we struggled with it as well. But that's where Janine and I, we made a decision between ourselves. We would coach one another for it. We still do it today. It's, it's an open rule in our lives that if we want to believe for something from God, we trust in God, that's the only thing that can come out of our mouths. And because of the world that we live in, the nature that we're in, uh, the, the nature of the world, we can be easily swayed just by watching a program or listening to other people speak. That's that old way of thinking can creep back in. And next moment we may say something like that. And then we help each other. We say, are you sure? Do we believe that now? Are we going to stand in agreement together? And we do it lightheartedly. We don't do it condemning or judging. Because sometimes we say, ah, did you hear what you said? You're not supposed to. No, we don't condemn one another. Love is encouraging. But we help identify and we say, you know what, we're going to bind that word in the name of Jesus. We refuse to say that. Someone says, man, my head is hurting. I feel sick. Oh, come on, let's stand against that. We're going to believe God by Jesus stripes you healed. Immediately flip that thing around and turn it. Why? Because we have a spirit of faith. And so we help each other. We coach each other. So now today we will speak wise and accurate words. I even do it when I'm listening to the news. Sometimes they will say things like, you know, this is wrong or this is going to happen or the, 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 we, particularly around, you know, Cape Town had gone through a tremendously bad drought and then they, they declared a thing called day zero. 
I stood up with our church. I said, you know what? They may have declared day zero, but we cancel it in the name of Jesus. We're going to speak God's provision, and God is the one that supplies every need. I believe we will have full supply of water whenever we need it. Well, after a period of time, we stood in faith. We prayed it. After a period of time, they canceled day zero. They said, there's no more day zero. Well, we rejoiced in it. Hallelujah. Well, it wasn't a few weeks later. Someone's announcing day zero for next year. I said, what? We haven't even been through winter yet. And already the world's talking about, we're going to have drought. We're going to have enough water. No. Spur of faith, God supplies. The same way He's always provided, we'll always be provided. And we keep speaking that. Keep speaking the spirit of faith. Keep declaring the concept of what God has given you as a promise. And so that's what we're doing. We're stirring ourselves up to understand that when you say something, it is going to come to pass. And we're going to look into that in more detail. We're out of time for today. But I really just want you to get a hold of this concept. Start renewing your mind. If you haven't yet done it, get somebody that can help you, to, to someone who understands the spirit of faith, and you can help one another to walk and speak accurately the Word of God. Well, I'm going to share with you something here. Have a look at this, and I'll see you right afterwards. Many people know about faith. They believe and trust God for various things in their lives, but somehow they still don't see their desired results. One of the greatest hindrances that I have seen to faith is the confession within faith. In order to see faith work, we need to understand the spirit of faith. The spirit of faith, the attitude of faith, is when I believe, I speak. In this series, Alan Back brings a fresh revelation on the importance of the spirit of faith. It will help you to take your spiritual life to an all-new level. God has placed within us the power and ability to speak what we believe. It will help you to see the promises of God manifest in your life. When you speak by faith, you're going to see that faith manifesting the promise that God has given. Get this series today and understand the spirit of faith. Contact us here at Allen Bag Ministries by making use of any of these contact details. Understanding the spirit of faith. Now, when we say understanding, again, remember, it's not just that logical understanding. It's seeing into the knowledge that it is a mystery that's hidden. And if the devil can keep us quiet, that's what he will try and do. He'll stop us from speaking what we believe. And sometimes put us through such pain and agony where we get to a point where we don't even feel like speaking to anybody, let alone even just talk scriptures out loud just because I'm sitting here. But I need to realize, no, this is the very source of my power. This is what God has given me, the authority to speak and declare. And that when you speak by faith, you're going to see that faith manifesting the promise that God has given. And so it's important to take these things. And the more you listen to it, that veil is being removed. And the more you study it out and you see into the wisdom, how do I do that? By continuously listening to the word. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. That's why we make these messages available so that you can get a hold of them, load them into your car, load them into your phone, however you listen. That's why we also give it on MP3. You can go ahead and get this USB a stick that's available with the mp3s on it so that you can load it into your computer whatever you use and listen to that word again and again and again and again and again and the more often you listen to it and keep listening to it eventually that word penetrates our hearts and then the veil is removed and you see it how often has that happened you've listened to something and then you go yeah i get that you listen again amen you listen again and like the six, seven, eight, sometimes for me it was like the 50th time I heard it. Suddenly you go, whoa, hang on. That's what God is saying. What happened? All of a sudden I saw into the mystery. And now today it's like obvious. And sometimes you say it to somebody and they go, yes, amen. You go, I don't think you get what I'm saying. This is what the word has said. And I understand that process now. And how do I combat that? Listening to it again and again. So get your set today and renew your mind to understanding the spirit of faith. Now, I want to do that right now. I'm going to speak into your life. I know that 
you've been through some challenges. The enemy has tried to hurt you, tried to take you down, but he's failed. Look at that. You're still there watching the program. Someone says, Pastor Alan, you don't know. Right now I'm going through a situation. I'm heading out into today and I'm worried about what's going to happen. Well, praise God. He's given us his word. Let's pray it together. Let's agree. Father, I come into faith agreement with my friend right now. No matter what the enemies try to bring against their life, I break the power of that thing in the name of Jesus. I destroy the work of Satan. I command that assignment to fail in Jesus' name, and I cast it out of that household, out of that life. And Father, I call my friend blessed. I plead the blood of Jesus over them right now. And I thank you, Father, that as you have given your promise of deliverance, you send your word to heal and to deliver them from their destruction. I speak that life now upon that person in the name of Jesus. There it is. Receive it. Receive the life of God, and I call you blessed. When you go into your workplace today, when you go into your life today, when you go into people's lives today, you are blessed with the wisdom of God. You have favor. Wherever you put your hand to prospers, you're destined to succeed for today. It's happening. The manifestation of God's Word is released and Father, I thank you for the great victory. We give you praise for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, praise God. That prayer is answered. I believe it. It's done. Now, when it manifests, I want you to write to us. Please, there's the details on the screen. Write in. Let us hear about it. I love to hear your testimonies of how God's Word manifests in your life. And we'll celebrate together. That's all we got time for today. We're going to get together around the Word of God again tomorrow. I look forward to being with you. This is Alan Bagg reminding you, Jesus is Lord. Remember, life is a choice. Choose life. God bless you. Join us here at the Bay Christian Family Church for a powerful time in both praise and worship as well as in God's life-changing Word. For any details on our many locations or to join us via live stream, visit our website or contact us at any of our details. If you missed any of this week's programs or if this week's Wisdom for Life programs have helped you, you are now able to purchase this week's Wisdom for Life programs and have them available to strengthen your faith when needed. This week's Wisdom for Life programs are available in digital format so purchase yours online at allenbagministries.org or contact us at any of our details. Choose life.